know, very few people are where they want to be financially. As a matter of fact, um, not many people can say that they're living their financial dreams or that their financial future looks very likely. And I used to be one of those people. You see, for so many years, I lived in financial ignorance. And I believe that ignorance is one of the greatest tragedies on earth. As a matter of fact, if you have financial ignorance, then it means that you're unable to solve a lot of your financial problems, but even more importantly, that you're unable to see financial opportunities. Now, financial wisdom is something that I encourage, and wisdom as a general term is something that I recommend passionately, primarily because the quality of your life seldom exceeds the quality of your wisdom. You see, when you have wisdom, you have options. You know what to do. You know what not to do. And I often say that wisdom is not the same as knowledge. You see, knowledge is like having a tool. You might just imagine this. You have a hammer. That's a tool. Knowledge is saying, okay, I know I have a hammer. Wisdom, on the other hand, is knowing when to use the tool, where to use the tool, how to use the tool, and more importantly, when to discard and use a different tool. And except you have wisdom, what you might find is that your financial future remains limited. Now, I believe that if you're not where you are today, if you're not where you want to be, rather, if today you're not living that financial future that you want, then it's an indication that there is something you don't know. That applies to me. Today, I have a dream. I have a dream of the future, but I'm not in my future yet because I'm not ready for it. Or rather, I should rephrase that. I haven't qualified for it yet. And you qualify for your future through wisdom. And so what I want to do in the next few minutes is show you why wisdom is important. And I want to talk about using the wisdom of leverage or using leverage wisdom. Now, you can use both interchangeably, but I want to show you the power of wisdom. You see, wisdom helps you have understanding. Understanding is important because through study, you generate a lot more awareness. I've often said, it's not about being in the right place at the right time. There's more to life, there's more to success, and there's more to wealth than being in the right place at the right time. You have to be the right person. That comes through wisdom and study. But also you have to be aware that you're in the right place at the right time. With that in equation complete, that leads to success. Now, I'm going to be talking about leverage, but I'm going to be talking about using debts leverage. Some people call this OPM. Now, debt is something that I should start with. I've drawn two signs, meaning there are two sides to debt. Debt can be seen in a positive way, but it can also be seen in a negative way. If you're financially intelligent and you have financial wisdom, you can use debt to get wealthier. And the reason that works is simply because you use debt to acquire assets, assets that appreciate in value, therefore they increase your net worth, but also assets that pay you an income, and therefore they increase your wealth worth. It means they make you wealthy. They appreciate in value and they create an income. That is what investment debt is all about. And that is what it should be used for. There is, on the other side, what we call personal debt. That is debt most people get into to buy liabilities. Liabilities are items that depreciate in value. And every month, rather than create an income for you, they create an expense. So the value of your original capital is shrinking and every month you have to pay for it. That is the difference. So good debts, investment debts will make you wealthy. Personal debts, liability debts will make you poor. You have to avoid personal debts. Now I'm talking about good debts. Now to make this a little bit more understandable, let's play a game here. Let's play a game and let's assume in this instance, just go with me with this game. Let's assume that you make 25,000 pounds per 
year. As a matter of fact, let me use £24,000 so that we're using even numbers. £24,000 would mean that we, you have £2,000 per month. That's easy. Now, if you make £2,000 per month, let's assume, in this case, the average person maybe could save 10%. This would be 200 pounds per month. So in 12 months, you've saved 2,400. So far, so good. In 10 years, if you're consistent and you just save, you would have saved 24,000 pounds. So far, so good. Now in 10 years, let's assume that you've saved for long enough and you're thinking about what you can do with your money now you can take this 24,000 pounds and you can put it in bonds you can put it in stock you can put in mutual funds you can put in gold silver commodities oil gas they will pay you a fractional return on your investment but to get into any of this investments including real estate I should say you can only spend £24,000. Meaning that your return will be based on your original capital. But financial wisdom allows you to understand the various options available and the various investment vehicles. You see, bonds, stocks, mutual funds, gold, silver, are very difficult to use or to invest in if you're trying to use debt leverage. However, with property investing and real estate, you can use debt leverage. Now, let me ask you this question. Let's just think about this. Let's assume that you had to, and you had an interest in buying a property, what, 240,000 pounds. Now, you would agree that if it took you 10 years to save 24,000 pounds, assuming that that's all you could save your life, in your lifetime, and that your salary did not change, it would mean that it would need, you would need about 100 years to generate 240,000 pounds to be able to buy this property, assuming that you could only buy with capital. So, for example, in the same way, bonds, stocks, mutual funds, you would need 240,000 pounds. Now, this exceeds the average lifespan, meaning you save all your life and you still wouldn't be able to buy the home you need. Now, if you apply investment leverage, on the other hand, it becomes a lot easy. So the question is, if you have £24,000, you can only buy £24,000 worth of gold, silver, bonds, Equity investments, stock, ETC. You can also probably only buy real estate worth that much. However, by using debt leverage, you can go to a bank and ask for what we call a 1090 deposit to loan. The banks love real estate and they consider real estate as less risky. The bank will be willing to allow you to buy a property what two hundred and forty thousand pounds. You provide twenty four thousand pounds. The bank will supply the remaining two hundred and sixteen thousand pounds as debt. Now this debt belongs to other people, other people's money. So by using debt, you can get into the investment journey as quickly as you can. Now here is the point I want to make. How long will it take for you to borrow this amount of money compared to how long it will take for you to save £240,000? Now, we already know that £240,000 will take you about 100 years to save, which we said is not feasible. We also know that if we were to assume, let's just assume that the bank would be willing to give you this deal, £216,000 as a loan, we know for sure that, that if the bank were to give you that, that you can borrow that amount of money from the bank in one hour if you have
have good credit records. If, for example, you've been consistent in paying your bills and your credit score is good, and you demonstrate through your due diligence and your calculations that the investment itself um, is a worth, worthy investment, meaning the income you generate from the investment far exceeds your expenses. Therefore, you can pay for the mortgage, pay all the extra expenses and have a profit at the end. If you can demonstrate this to the bank, the bank will consider that to be a good investment. You see, the bank, they have money. They're simply looking for people to give it to you. Now, coming back to this example, you can get this in one year just by going to the bank with the right documents and the right proof that you are a good investor. Now, compare this one year against 100 years. Can you see the difference? Can you see the difference? Now, this is where financial wisdom comes in. You never would have understood that that was possible if you did not increase your level of understanding if you did not study that's the power of wisdom and so what I want to conclude by saying to you is this understand that debts can be your friend but if you're going to use debts I'm going to give you some suggestions and this is where I conclude today's session if you're going to use debts then you must understand that the quantity of debts you get into should always, should always, the quantity of debt should always be less or equal to your wisdom. Never go into debt. Never go for debt, no matter how attractive it might seem, except you have wisdom. The more debt you acquire, the more wisdom you should acquire. Because the more wisdom you acquire, the more financial intelligence you have, and the better and higher your financial IQ. Your financial intelligence and IQ helps you solve problems. It helps you see opportunities. It helps you understand risks. But this comes from wisdom. So, my recommendation is this. If you are going to start using debts, my recommendation is make some time and study. Invest in your mind because your knowledge is what leads true study to understanding. And true understanding and application creates wisdom. Invest in your mind. My recommendation is that you should probably spend about three to five years in study. Now this doesn't mean you just sit down and read, read, read. No, there has to be a period of time consistent amount of time of study and this should be at least between one and two hours every day without fail every day consistently before you start using debt now it doesn't mean you can't do it before then but the problem is if you lack wisdom you're bound to make poor decisions and the best investment decisions are always those that are made before the deal is done. And by that, what I simply mean is that the investor already understands a number of things. Number one, he understands the vision, the purpose. They understand the exit strategy. They understand their standards, the rules, what they will not accept. They understand what they need the investment for. Now, all of that requires study. More importantly, they know a good deal. They know when to say, let's walk from this. Let's just walk away. You need to be start a student and you must become lifelong in learning. It's a must if you're going to use debt because debt is like a loaded gun. You know, think about this. You know, if you were to take um, a hammer and you left it on your kitchen table, let's assume that in your living room you have a glass dining table. If you have a baby, the baby can pick up that hammer, walk to that table, and smash that table. Why? Because the baby doesn't know the purpose of the hammer. You can take that same hammer and you can make for yourself a very beautiful piece of furniture. In the hands of the right person, the hammer serves you well. In the hands of the wrong person, the hammer causes you harm. So invest in your knowledge. I would say debt should not be something you consider until you start investing in your knowledge. And it must be consistent on a daily basis. 
If you do this, what you'll find is that as you start to see opportunities, that there will be some transactions that come your way, that you know you can use debt to make it work, but you will caution yourself from going into that deal because you will know that you don't have enough experience or knowledge or understanding and that would encourage you to go and seek for more wisdom. Now this is key, but the point I want to conclude with is this. You don't have to get wealthy using equity alone. I said alone. You can use debt. In my opinion, using other people's money is a shortcut to success. But, but you must remember, have a backup. Don't go borrowing money in case the deal goes wrong. That's the problem. Most people borrow money, they get into debt, and they don't have any means to support that deal or transaction. So when things go wrong, they're stuck. Always remember that even though you use debt, you need a strong foundation of either capital to support you in case something goes wrong, but also you need financial wisdom. I hope that's been useful.